but in a resort to arms. But higher authorities believe the real threat is in Lower Canada, so the entire British garrison is sent there. By the late autumn of 1837, not one professional soldier remains in Toronto. Violence now breaks out across Lower Canada. In the county of Two Mountains in the Richelieu Valley and in the region south of Montreal, Patriot harass and intimidate local officials who refuse to join them. The spreading violence convinces the British military commander, General John Colburn, that now is the time to act. The revolutionists are running over a large section of the country, armed and menacing every individual who hesitates to join them. If we neglect to profit by the offers from the upper province and those by the inhabitants of Montreal to assist by raising cause, while we permit the declared revolutionists to arm quietly, we shall lose the province. In Montreal, the arrival of soldiers from the neighboring colonies heightens the tension. The Patriot leaders retreat to their strongholds. Saint-Benoît and Saint-Eustache in the county of Two Mountains, or Saint-Denis and Saint-Charles in the Richelieu Valley. Among them, Louis-Joseph Papineau. Arrest warrants for high treason are issued against them all. The civil authorities have called for the military to assist them in apprehending these persons. It is of the greatest importance to drag the leaders of the revolt from their meeting places. General Colburn orders troops into the Richelieu Valley. He wants to strike first, before the insurgents can mount a serious military threat. A few miles outside Saint-Denis, the first contingent arrives at dawn. The troops have been marching all night. Daniel Lysons is a lieutenant in the 1st Regiment of Foot, the Royal Scots. It soon became evident that the rebels were on the alert. The church bells were heard in the distance ringing the alarm, and parties of skirmishers appeared on our left flank. November 23rd, 1837. The die is cast. At Saint-Denis, 300 British soldiers confront 800 Patriot. About a hundred of the rebels have taken up positions in front of the Saint-Germain house on the main road to Sorel. Papineau and the other leaders 
have entrusted the defense of Saint Denis to Dr. Wolfred Nelson. I told my companions that their lives were sought after, and that they must sell them as dearly as they could. To be steady, take good aim, lose no powder, and all attend to their duty, their self-preservation. battle lasts for six hours. But musket fire is not highly accurate, and there are relatively few victims. <laughs> Philippe Napoleon Pacot, a notary, is in the thick of the action. I don't know how many I killed, but I fired without remorse. It was not so much from a sentiment of insults and injustices, but the old instinct of traditional hatred of the races that awoke in us. We were fighting despotism, but it was above all the English that we loved to aim at. The stubborn resistance has taken the English by surprise, and their ammunition is running low. Finally, Colonel Charles Gore orders his men to retreat. Twelve soldiers and thirteen Patriot are dead. Louis-Joseph Papineau is not at Saint-Denis to celebrate the victory. Some will say that Wilfred Nelson ordered him to leave the village for his own safety. Others will accuse him of fleeing the battlefield. While his men celebrate, Nelson realizes they have taken a fateful step. We have now passed the Rubicon. Our very lives are at stake. There is no alternative. Even a mean, cringing submission will scarcely protect us from every kind of ignominy, insult, and injury. Worse to bear than death itself. If indeed this event do not befall us at once. We see now but the painful necessity of taking up arms in good earnest and manfully awaiting the occurrences which our attitude may provoke. General Colburn is shaken by the Patriot victory and makes an urgent appeal to the Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada. The civil war has now commenced in this province. I entreat you, therefore, to call out the militia of Upper Canada and endeavour to send to Montreal as many corps as may be inclined to volunteer their services at this critical period. Political struggle has given way to armed rebellion. Saint-Denis is only the first in a series of bloody confrontations. The rebellion will spread all the way to Upper Canada. Hundreds of men will fall on the battlefields and the fate of Canada hangs in the balance. Assemblez-vous! In the autumn of 1837, armed conflict erupts after years of political struggle. At Saint-Denis, the Patriot win an unexpected victory. Encouraged by this, Rebels in Upper Canada decide to march on Toronto. Would you live and die a slave? These men are desperate to win what they have dreamed of for years. Fire! The right to govern themselves.
November 25th, 1837. The British army is determined to crush the Patriot resistance. The fate of the rebellion will be decided at Saint-Charles in the Richelieu Valley. Jean-Philippe Boucher-Belleville is one of the 250 rebels. We were on the defensive. There was no doubt about it. And for us, the whole question came down to this. Were we to yield up our property, our women and children, to a horde of barbarians without so much as a struggle? To barbarians who had come not to obey the law, but to plunder us by fire and sword and fill their own pockets? Charles Beauclerc is one of the officers in command of 425 British soldiers at Saint-Charles. Colonel Weatherall hoped that a display of his force would induce some defection among the infatuated people. But unfortunately for the sake of humanity, it was far otherwise. This gave rise to an order for the three center companies to fix bayonets and charge the works. Company! Experience! To the front! Hurt! Covered by their comrades fire, the Royal Scots, one of Britain's fiercest regiments, close ranks and advance on the barricade. After two straight hours of continuous gunfire from both sides, the troops charged with bayonets. We had no weapons suitable for close-range combat, and so we had to abandon the field to them. of the Patriots surrender. Lieutenant! Sir! Move your platoon forward and take care of the prisoners! But others refuse to admit defeat. of Saint-Charles ends in a bloodbath. 150 Patriot are killed and only seven British soldiers. News of the clash in the Richelieu Valley reaches Upper Canada. William Lyon Mackenzie is convinced the time is ripe to attack Toronto. In the absence of British troops, he hopes to seize power and form a provisional government. Most of Mackenzie's followers are disaffected farmers. He summons them to Montgomery's Tavern, a few miles north of Toronto. December 4th, only 150 men have answered Mackenzie's call. They are tired, famished, and poorly organized. 